Little brother, little brother. My only in reality, the only nigga ever known to match with my mentality. Shaq and Kobe to the fullest in reverse form. Killing niggas on the court. Yeah, it hurt for him. But despite that, you was there to ride or die. It's no wonder why we always see an eye to eye. Called you when I was going through some trials of life. Vice versa. I was always there to talk and give advice. We gonna make it in this world to live a better life. Take it as it comes. Stick together through whatever strife. You my right hand, the only one that understand. My train of thought, sign of a real nigga fam. Deadly combo, the world ain't ready for the wrath. One soldier plus another, I'ma let y'all do the math. This unconditional love I feel is unreal. At the end of the day, Big Sam, you know I will. Wrote that back in 2010. I believe it was uh, 2009 actually, but the project came out in 2010. On my uh, on my second mixtape, Haunting in Connecticut, uh, I wrote that verse for my brother, man. Um, Big Sam, you know what I mean? Uh, who tragically passed away on November fifteenth of this year? Uh, November, sorry. Um, it's just it's you know. For the last 20 years, man, this 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 has been the closest person to me in my life, man, besides my woman. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's like, you know, I've already <clears throat> kind of went through not speaking to him over the last couple months because he was in the hospital. So, you know, I had already been used to not calling the phone for the last two months, man, because, you know, I've been up back and forth to the hospital seeing him. You know, uh, it's just the toughest shit I probably ever had to go through in my life, man. Um, it still feels unreal. You know what I mean? Um, and the, the crazy thing is nobody probably would even knew about it. I was going through this or he was going through this or whatever. Like if um, he hadn't passed away because, you know, I like him, we were those kind of people, man, that didn't, you know, we don't put our personal life out there for the world to see, you know, like if we, if we sick or we going through something, we kind of, you know, we just hunker down and, and we deal with that shit, you know, internally as a family or, you know, whatever. Um, so it's just, you know, like I said, over the last couple months, I've been going to see him at the hospital, man. It was just like, it was tough seeing him like that. You know, he's just, uh, the first time I went up there to see him, that was the only time that he was alert. And aware of everything that was going on you know he was trying to communicate with me um obviously couldn't speak but you know I, um i tried to get him to write some things he, he's unable to write or whatever so you know that was the first time i went to go see him all the times after that i went to see him he was sedated so you know <laughs> i just hope he felt my presence there um you know his lady was there with him every step of the way um like I said, man, it's just it's like this is the biggest loss that I've ever personally, you know, like this is somebody I deal with. I understand like I only speak to three people on the phone with my, my woman. Obviously, when I'm not home, you know, we we live with each other, but we're not home. We speak, obviously, on the phone. Um, my mom and Sam, like so every detail of my life, man, this is the person I'm, I'm, t- I'm telling, you know, to to get his feedback and you know how we go attack the problem because we attacked everything together that's just what we did like anything we did like yo <clears throat> we lean on each other you know what i mean like real brothers like it, it like it's where we were so close it's disrespectful to our you know to our bond to call each other friends you know what i mean that's my brother for the last 20 years uh met in 2004 it just been like just ever since man like hand in hand bro like so you know it's like the reality of the shit is just like it's it's unbelievable man like i had a moment <clears throat> had a moment the other night where I, I was about to pick up the phone and call him like and it's like for the f- foreseeable future I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure that'll that'll happen you know and 
I've never, I, I told my lady this shit. I, I think I did. I don't know. I've been kind of like in a fog for the last over a week now since he passed. Um, I just, I don't even like the shit is indescribable. Like I can't even, I had a moment where I almost drove up to the hospital cause I had been so used to going up there to see him. And I was like, damn, I got to go up to the hospital to see bro. But you know, everything went down, you know, um, like I said, man, shout out to his lady, man. She, uh, was keeping me in the loop of everything, you know, when I wasn't able to be up at the hospital, um, uh, the day before he passed, you know, she was letting me know that, you know, the arrangements were going to start being made. You know, I kind of broke down um, in the car. Uh, yeah, and immediately went up there. So, you know, I sat with him probably about eight hours that night. Um, and I, I went to the house. I came back the next morning and about 30 minutes after I got there, you know, they the doctors came in and said they're going to take him off the supports and all the other shit and we all just kind of stayed in the room everybody prayed man and you know they they you know they pronounced him dead about 20 minutes later with all of us in the room you know so at least i could say you know i, I was there with him to the end um never been a part of anything like that before so you know maybe some of you have and you know i don't kind of hard to cope, man, seeing somebody you love, man, go through that. And, you know, his, his kids, man, is just like, I can't even, I can't even imagine what his kids, his mom, his dad, like, it's just, you, you know, you, you're kind of at a loss for words, man. But, um, I think just like I always say, man, day by day, I'm sure I'll get, I'll start feeling better about it. You know what I mean? Um, well, not feeling better about it, but learning how to deal with it. I think it's a better way to say that. Um, yeah. You know, me and bro, man, like we, we been through everything together. Like literally, man, we don't went on trips, you know what I'm saying? You know, guys trips and shit like that. You know what I mean? Uh, just all type of relationship advice, man, what we going to do and, you know, in the future and like just anything you could think of that you go through with your, with your, with your man. Like I'm talking about your man, like your, the number one man is like that you fuck with in your life. Like this, this, this is that, you know what I mean? So, you know, to lose that shit, just, it's really, it's indescribable, man. Like the the sadness I feel over this shit is like nothing I've ever felt in my life. And I've lost family members before. You know what I mean? Um, and rest in peace to all of them, man. Like it's, it's just nothing. There's just nothing like it, man. You know, I've had a lot of I've dealt with a lot of death internally this year. There's a lot of a lot of people that passed this year, you know, that knew me growing up you know my uncle passed in october my godmother and i think it was august or september you know my girl had tragedy in her family this year one of her cousins um so it's just been this has been one of them years even her dog passed this year it's like you know she had her dog for 13 14 years and he even he passed this year so it was like just one after another, man. 2023 has been one of the ones so for sure. So, you know, I would have been completely remiss if I didn't mention all of these things, you know, I've been going through personally over the last few months. But uh, yeah, man, we we strive for we strive for better days, man. We pray for better days and and, and we just keep on going. You know what I mean? Pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and we keep it and we keep it pushing, man. But um this was definitely one that that's going to stay with me for a very long time. I'm sure I'll probably never be the same person ever again. I'm already reserved as it is. You know what I mean? I don't talk to people, so I could imagine that's probably going to even heighten more. You know, things like this, I guess, help me as an outlet. You know what I mean? Because Big Sam, man, that's my number one outlet. That's my little brother, man. You know what I mean? And literally, I'm going to ride this motherfucker to the wheels fall off, man, like he would want me to. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, with that being said, man, I, I just couldn't I couldn't uh, return. <clears throat> I couldn't return back to these videos without acknowledging my brother, man. That's just that's just that, you know, this motherfucker looked out for me and he had my best interest over anybody. You know what I mean? Besides my mom and my woman, of course, you know, these that's those are my three. Those are my three cornerstones. You know what I mean? So. Big shout out, man, to my little bro. Rest in power, my nigga. You know, I got it. I got you, man. You know, we're going to honor you right. I'm going to keep your name alive for as long as I live. Um, You know, I'm going to do my best to look out for the kids. You know what I mean? And just going to hold it down. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. Y'all uh, probably got some more videos coming up soon. I might do one after this one. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, I had to take this. I had to take that break, man, because mentally I was just in a in a bad spot. So, yeah, we back. Uh, Fly Free Speak. This is episode 13. Rest in power. Big Curry. Like, share, subscribe, man. All y'all be safe out there, man. Let's close this year strong and let's keep getting to it, man. All right. Let's go.